Hello everyone, my name is Rajesh Chatterjee and this video we are going to talk about a very important topic called how you as a developer, admin or consultant, you do something called deployment in Salesforce. Okay, And uh, uh, for, for doing a deployment, right, it's not a very tough job, right, Salesforce as a product made sure that you know you uh, you know you as a you know uh, deployment manager or whatever role you play should get this deployment done in no time with just drag and drop and configurations okay so uh, before i talk about this deployment process right let me, let me just talk about how normally the environments been used in different different projects okay so normally for uh, any development project right suppose it's a scratch development customer is just starting the development uh, you know work today and uh, you as a you as a consultant has started working in that project right so initially what happened right you you, you have to have something uh, called sandbox environment right the one that you are logging right now login.salesforce.com now this is basically where your business user logs in so you have a couple of different different environments one environment is called sandbox sandbox is an environment where you as an admin or developer do your configurations and development once the development is done in your sandbox multiple iterations of qa testing happens and then finally it gets pushed to production right and one fine morning when the business user they wake up they see that you know some some new feature has been added for an example right you have been using facebook right if you remember like a couple of years back in facebook we had a different theme altogether the one that we're using 2023 it, it was not there but one fine morning you know you wake up and started seeing that facebook is coming with a very nice you know black and white environment all right you ui is totally different but do you think the facebook development team they just did in in in, in just one or two days no they might be doing the development for like many months many years but we as an end user like we as a business user did not get any uh, any impact for their development why because their development team were, were actually using different environment altogether they were not touching the one that business users are using every day that is the use of sandbox environment sandbox is same like you know uh, what you are seeing what you have worked so far right it looks like you're exactly production org but sandbox org basically gets connected with the production environment right i'm just giving you the theoretical knowledge next video we're going to show you you know how to create a sandbox how would the sandbox gets connected with the uh, production and all right so sandbox is an environment where the developers the admin do their jobs and once the development part is finished done the metadata what is metadata metadata are basically the apex class the LWC component, whatever you have developed, the object, fields, page layout, the metadata is to push from sandbox environment to the production environment. And then production users started enjoying the feature that you have developed for them. Okay. So typically when you work for a project, right, there are, uh, you know, we can create multiple uh, sandboxes, uh, you know, uh, so normally what happened, let me just explain the story. Okay. Uh, if you see my screen. Normally, the development happened in a sandbox called Dev Sandbox. <clears throat> this is a sandbox that we as an admin create and give it to the development team and they do all the development in that sandbox. Once the development is done, let's say the development team has done with the development. Now it has to be tested by the QA engineer. Right? You have a developer team in the uh, project right you have a testing team then uh, the production goes right so once the development is done in your dev sandbox it, it, it the metadata whatever has been developed by the admin and developer get pushed to some other environment called QA environment so this is called QA sandbox in QA sandbox this is where the manual testers the automation testers, right they, they come and they perform the testing activities they test all the feature they find it is there's a bug they you know ask the developer to fix it and the developer doesn't fix the problem here in the qa sandbox they fix it in the dev sandbox okay so we are understanding the theoretical part okay how the project happened right in fact you're going to see the same thing when you do when you do the project also right so uh, your dev sandbox where you do the development qa sandbox where you do the you know test testers used to do the testing and finally once the qa people gives a green signal the metadata gets pushed to another sandbox called uat sandbox what is this uat sandbox this plays a very big role okay to improve the product 
and I believe like every project there should be a UAT sandbox. The UAT should happen. UAT basically called user acceptance testing, where the real user, uh, let's say your customer is a real estate company, and your real estate company has some have some product uh, owner. The product owner is throughout the requirement gathering workshop. The product owner has given you the requirement. Once you're done with the development, the product owner's job is to test it. And for that, they need an environment. They will not go and test it in the QA sandbox or in the depth sandbox. So the metadata, once the QA team green, you know, gives a green signal, it used to get pushed to this UAT sandbox. And here, the actual user, they perform the testing. And when it says that, you know, this is something not working, it gets again fixed in the depth sandbox. Again, it gets pushed to QA sandbox. QA gives a green signal. It goes back to the US sandbox, UAT sandbox. UAT pass, right? When the uh, customer said that, no, I, we think we are good with the UAT. Then it gets pushed to the production environment. Is something where you're all real. So, so let's say <clears throat> this real estate company has total 700 sales executive and 200 like service executive, right? All like 900 people they're using Salesforce. So they will be using this production org for their day to day operations. The team, the production will be used by the sales team, service team, HR team, whatever, right? So the process is the development happened in the dev sandbox. Done, get pushed to QA sandbox. That is done. It, goes, it gets to, it get pushed to UAT sandbox. Real user, uh, they do the testing. Once they give the green signal, once the, once the UAT is signed up, we call this as called UAT sign off. UAT sign, sign off means customer say that, you know, the UAT has been done completely. Then that data, that metadata that is developed, right? In last couple of months, it gets pushed to production. This is the normal process. Again, this is not like hard and fast rule that you every project should follow this. Even if there is a small project, you can have only one sandbox, one production, do the development here. Same testing you do in the same environment, push to production. That is also possible. So technically, it's not that every project should have it, but this is like best practice. Every project should have this, this these environments. You know? So the separate, separate environment and developer or admin should never ever do any of the bug fix or the development in UAT or QA. By the way, production, you should never touch it. We should not, you should never ever do direct fixes in production. That's a nightmare sometimes you have to face, right? You always have to use the sandboxes. So Salesforce has provided something called chain set, guys. Chain set is a simple configuration Salesforce has provided through which we do this deployment process. Right, but this change it has some has some you know uh, I would say right if you want to do something called version control right if you are a experienced IT guy you would be knowing about something called version control that this change it cannot do right for that you have to use the CI CD tool that is different but we are going to cover up in this video and more probably in, in next video how Salesforce given standard change it can help you to do this particular deployment okay so we understand this theory what are the environment we should be having. Now let's understand the theory of chain set. And once we understand the theory, right? I'm going to take you a production, I mean, uh, paid org. And, and by the way, this chain set and all uh, the sandboxes and all, uh, it, uh, it doesn't get available in the free developer org. Okay, you should have a paid org or the customer org where the paid license are there. There only you get to see the sandboxes. Okay, so your developer org where you are logging every day, login.salesforce.com. If you go to set up and search for and sandbox, you will not get it. Okay, so you cannot maybe do a practice for this just a theoretical knowledge you can have but i mean uh, this is exactly what i'm going to explain now and this next video this is exactly what you'll be doing in a project as part of the deployment what is chain set <clears throat> chain set is some is is a is a bucket where you add all the changes that you have done as an admin let's say you have created five objects 10 fx classes 10 test classes everything will be adding in the chain set from the dev sandbox and let's say you are sending the metadata whatever you have developed from dev to QA sandbox so whatever you have added in the chain set one by one one by one pack it up and push it to QA sandbox right go to the QA sandbox open the pack and one by one you get that metadata into QA sandbox getting me right so this is called chain set chain set there are basically two types of chain set one is called outbound chain set what is this outbound chain set? One is and another thing is called uh, inbound chain set. Okay. 
see uh, understand this theory okay theoretical th- uh, uh, theoretical let me explain this inbound and outbound chain set and then once this is done i'm going to show you how to create it how to deploy it mean, i'm i'm going to show you all the steps uh, you know one by one okay so uh, outbound chain set is basically when you try to push the metadata from dev sandbox to qa sandbox for an example whatever the metadata you are trying to push from this sandbox to this sandbox you have to add those metadata in the outbound chain set so remember this from the dev sandbox you are sending some data out of this dev sandbox right you are sending some metadata out of this dev sandbox so in the dev sandbox you have to create an outbound chain set in the qa sandbox you are sending you are you are accepting that chain set so it's basically inbound whatever chain set you have uh, created as an outbound from dev sandbox and push it back and uploaded it back to the qa in qa you have to open it up as a inbound chain set so this is here is outbound we are sending the metadata from dev to qa and in qa it is inbound outbound and inbound okay um now uh, let me open a sandbox um, a, a, a production org and ex- explain like how to create sandbox what are the different different types of sandboxes are available okay so uh, in the next video i'm going to explain i'm going to open up a, a, a production org and i'm going to show you what is sandbox how to create what are the different different sandboxes available and how can you log into a sandbox and how can you push the metadata i mean do the deployment from one sandbox to another sandbox or one sandbox to production clear so see you in the next video